Corners are bound to be cut, but these video games kind of take it to the extreme. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 worst cases of padding in video games. Are you a fan of this video? Be sure to subscribe to catch our latest show, The Bolt to E3. Four gamers take an epic road trip from San Fran to LA, gaming all the way. Watch the whole series now on WatchMojo. For those of you who don't know what padding is, it refers to moments in video games that are purposefully drawn out, notably repeating boss battles or forcing backtracking, all for the sake of artificially drawing out the game's playtime at the expense of a player's enjoyment or frustration. Mission accepted. Number 10, The Library, Halo Combat Evolved. The Halo franchise is notorious for reusing the same enemies throughout their games, but the library level in Combat Evolved definitely takes the cake for repetition. The mission in this level is to retrieve an index in a library to help defeat the parasitic horde known as the Flood. This might kinda sound like fun, but in practice, it's about as exciting as a real trip through a library, except with less books. This level is designed with a predictable maze of the same corridor copy-pasted basically everywhere. While that's bad enough, the level also has you fighting the same enemies over and over again, with the same weapons and using the same tactics. The result is a level long enough for your Doritos to go stale and Mountain Dew to go flat. Number 9. Boss Rush – Mega Man Series One of the essential elements of any Mega Man game is the boss rush. Near the end of every Mega Man and Mega Man X title, the player is rewarded for beating the previous bosses by making you fight them all over again. With each new boss defeated, Mega Man gains a power-up that makes it easier to advance in different levels and gives him an advantage over certain bosses. That means that once you fight them again in the boss rush, the battles are often far less challenging and altogether, you know, uninteresting. While it's kinda nice to obliterate some of the bosses that were giving you trouble earlier on, did it really have to be in every game? Number 8. Collecting Cores – Re-Core For a game with the word core in the title, you'd expect there to be a lot of thought put into the <laughs> core gameplay, but not so much. For the most part, collecting those shiny orbs is pretty fun, but the problem is that everything involves these stupid cores, including story missions. Nearly every time you want to advance in the story, your character needs to collect a certain amount of a certain kind of core. Gameplay runs especially thin near the end, where the objective is basically to climb a tower, but every entrance to a higher floor is blocked by a door that needs a certain number of cores to open it. For the player, this means a ton of backtracking and a lot of busy work, all in the name of artificially extending the length of the game. Number 7. Chapter 2 Mission Structure – Metal Gear Solid V – The Phantom Pain Your objective is to steal an entire truck from a PF convoy. We don't have a fix on the truck we want. After powering through a challenging series of well-thought-out missions that can easily soak up many hours of gameplay in the first fantastic chapter of Metal Gear Solid V, the second chapter… well, things begin to fall apart. A large portion of the second half of the game is filled with missions lifted straight from the first half of the game with just some extra requirements, like going in with no equipment or not being able to get detected at all. But the worst offender by far is the game's final mission, which forces you to play through the entire prologue in all of its painfully slow glory all over again. I mean, like, literally you have to crawl through a lot of it. Number 6. Do it all over again, bravely default. Is there really such a resemblance? Did I speak thus in the previous world? After playing through a game that boasts a rich storyline, a complex fighting system, and several interesting side quests, the heroes of Bravely Default finally awaken the four crystals in order to save the world. Only, instead of saving the world, they're all booted into a parallel dimension where they'll have to just do it all over again. That's right, the four final chapters of this eight chapter JRPG are all reiterations of previous chapters. Granted, some bosses and side quests are optional in these sequential parallel universes, but that's really no excuse to have the player trudge through four levels of the same, if slightly different, story. All the more reason for us to start again from scratch, I think. From scratch? Number 5. Mundane Jobs – No More Heroes In No More Heroes, you play as an unemployed loner who, after running out of money, begins his career as a hired assassin in order to buy more video games. Naturally. 
Hey, GameStop offers you like no credit for your old ones, right? And that'll make you want to kill people. Anyway, it obviously doesn't seem like a game with a strong emphasis on realism, but for large swaths of the game, things get a little too real. Each mission requires Travis to pay a large administration fee to take on the ranked assassins, which means your character has to raise enough money by working odd jobs around town. These gigs include lawn mowing, garbage collecting, and graffiti cleaning. And yes, they're just about as dull and boring as they would be in real life. That's easy. Number 4. Egg Quests Monster Hunter Series Let's face it, nobody really likes escort missions all that much. Having to stop the action in order to protect a helpless NPC can really bring a fast-paced game to a grinding halt. The egg quests in the Monster Hunter series take the annoyance a step further though. For these quests, your character picks up a really heavy monster egg and has to deliver it across the map. Because these eggs are so heavy, your character's walking speed is greatly reduced and you're basically unable to use your weapons and items to defend yourself. Oh, and if you get hit once, or decide to jump off a ledge or something, the egg breaks and you have to start all over. Oh, and the worst part? The quests sometimes require more than one egg. Yep, multiple trips. Number 3. Rescuing the Tribals Jet Force Gemini Getting all the collectibles in this game is usually saved for side quests that reward the player with secret items or in-game perks, but apparently Jet Force Gemini never got the memo. In the game, there are dozens of koala-like NPCs called tribals hidden throughout every level, and you need to rescue every single one to get to the final level. Problem is with how the game keeps track of the tribals you've collected, as it'll only count the number saved in one area rather than the specific ones that you've rescued. You missed one tribal during a run? Well, you gotta start the process all over again, sucker. Not only that, but it's also possible for enemies to kill the tribals in the heat of battle, again, making you start that level all over again. Number 2. Upside Down Castle, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night That can't be true! You're wrong! Because of this game's multiple endings, it's entirely possible to technically finish it without ever knowing that you've only played half of it, and <laughs> you might be better off. If you do manage to crack the code and make it to the second half of the game, you get to play the entire castle again, except it's turned upside down. Although the inverted castle offers a few new enemies and bosses, and some of the rooms were designed with the upside down castle in mind, there's no denying that just flipping the stupid map is about the laziest way of extending a game we've ever heard of. Well, almost. This is number two. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. The Triforce Quest Legend of Zelda Wind Waker Wind Waker does a great job at creating a world that feels expansive and interesting, with a huge ocean map featuring plenty of islands to discover and explore. Hoisting your sails and setting out on the water for the first time felt like a grand, unforgettable adventure that would never get old, and for the most part, sailing was pretty engaging, right up until the final dungeon. In order to enter Ganon's Tower, Link must retrieve the eight shards of the Triforce of Courage, which are, of course, scattered across hundreds of miles of ocean. But before he can do that, he has to find the eight maps to locate these shards. To make matters worse, the shards have to be deciphered by Tingle for just under 400 rupees each. Fans were so put off by this drawn-out quest that it was shortened in the game's HD remake. But for those who played the original version, they know this quest was a bit of a slog. Do you agree with our picks? Don't forget to check out The Bolt to E3, a brand new series from WatchMojo, where four gamers take an epic road trip from San Fran to LA, gaming all the way.